Okay, uh, so Manoj has presented you the common data service and common data model from the perspective of the team that has developed that. And I will talk about the scenarios that we, the application teams, in this, in this, in this case, the supply chain application team in Copenhagen, what are we actually looking into and actually start developing on top of that uh, of sort of that infra infrastructure on top of that capability. And that might also give you an, an idea on where we're heading kind of also from the development perspective, you know, for where we used to develop X++ code and actually uh, used to deliver X++ functionality. You will see us also developing services that are actually like, like the, the uh, uh, common data service um, infrastructure like the kind of the um, uh, f uh, third party or first party applications as we call that on top of the common data platform. So we will also develop native services and release that just as we expect our partners to do that in the future. So what I want to talk about is three different aspects. The already mentioned integration to, uh, for, between uh, sales and operations, uh, the what we call the uh, actually the, the prospect to cash scenario. This is what we're working on right now, together with uh, with the foundation teams that actually build some of the c capabilities to do so, and then together also with the sales uh, team and with uh, uh, we, we we will do this integration. I will talk about. A, a scenario that we call connected product innovation. That is not one single scenario, that is a set of scenarios. And that is actually a vision, it's a, it's a, it's a somewhere we want to get to. Um, and we will provide uh, first steps into that, and we will hope we can actually motivate and inflame you to actually go do something in that area as well. So we can do it together and get to something even better. And then uh, also talk a little bit about, about uh, the data service in your applications and uh, third-party applications. What is it that we would like to, to see you doing in the future? So let's start with the Dynamics 365 integration prospect to cache. So that is the overall ranking scenario that we are looking into when, we, when doing the integration from CRM uh, to AX and the other way around. Um, and obviously, it's clear that this is only one way of integrating. We have looked at a lot of customers and partners how they actually integrate, and it's not all the same. Um, so this is also why the result will actually be also be highly configurable and be kind of like, like you could you would be able to kind of change every part of the compo of the of the solution for your specific implementation in the end as well so if you think of a dynamics 365 sales and a dynamics 365 for operations that should collaborate the scenario kind of in very short terms is that we have a, a new customer a new project on an existing product the existing product comes out of AX and into the data common in the common data model is going into CRM and the new customer and the sales order will come out of sales and will then be kind of going down to AX be, will be created there uh, so you can actually have the, the the actual order created as well so how would that look like from in the direction to from sales to uh, to, uh, towards operations, we have the extract part obviously inside of the sales that will, through an M engine, will be connected into the common data model. In the common data model, there's a mapping capable. There will be a, a mapping capability. So the gateway the functionality will have a flexible ma mapping tool where you can actually do the mapping of the of the in this case, the sales data source to the common data model. You can use it as we've su supplied out of the box, or you can also change it. Or if you and if you have Salesforce instead of 
365, you would just use another connector to the common data model. So now I have it in the common data model, and now I can, from the common data model, I go the same way out into AX. Again, I can, I have a, tra in, in this case, I have my data entities in AX. I actually go move it into the data entities. I have a transformation capability there as well, and can then over the, the data import export framework kind of in, include it into AX. So that would be true for the customer and also for the, for the sales order. Now in the other direction, it will work just the same. If I have operations, I use my common, my data entities to extract it, to populate the, data, the common data uh, model, the common data service. Again, the capability to transform that, that is, in that case, we have two, in the scenario, we will have two touch points. One, the first one is the product. So the product master, we assume it, it, it may come, but it's actually the first thing we implement. It, it, a product comes from AX, goes into the common data model, and goes over to the sales. Again, you have these capabilities to, to transform on both sides, on the, on, the move, uh, on the mapping inside of the common data model and the mapping outside. <coughs> Especially on the product, we have pretty extensive discussions right now how to model that correctly because that's, that's not, it seems for some cases obvious, but we actually have a couple of cases where it's, it, it's, it's far beyond being a non-brainer. Um, and we obviously, obviously want to have, to keep the product model on one hand as simple as possible, but, on, but also as capable as possible. And that uh, will require a little bit of more discussion. So expect, especially that part of the, it, the product is in the common data model today in a very, very simplex, simplistic, minimalistic state. We will have to extend that, not, not, not yet fully def defined how in, and, and how we're doing that. It is actually in a scalable way. Because to be honest, from an application perspective, what we fear is that the product in the common data model will soon look like invent table when you have five ISV solutions on top of that. Uh, it's just not usable anymore. And so we want to find a, a starting point and the, and the modeling there that uh, enables you to extend it, but in a way that it's not getting, getting that um, crazy again. We have all the best intentions. So this is so, so much I want to kind of expose for the sales. Uh, it's um, something we, we intend to ship in the spring release. Um, some of you might have seen the recording from the AXOG keynote from, um, from Scott Guthrie where we actually showed the prototype that was not yet using common data model, but it was actually the same scenario. The second part we're working on is the, the a kind of a set of scenarios under the big topic connected product innovation. The way we see it in SEM and manufacturing is that Products, and it's not actually only true there, it's also true in retail and distribution, is that products have, have continuous change, continuous improvement. In the engineering world, engineering driven, but also a lot of that is really customer driven. The opportunity that we actually have with leveraging the, the data that we have in multiple subsystems of, of our ecosystem, some of them dynamics, some of them something else, uh, is that we have a lot of product data. And with IoT and Industry 4.0, we're getting even more product data. And, and the question is, what are, what are they telling us? What can we do with those? And how we, can we bring these, these data together to do faster product innovations, to get better insight and drive business decisions faster and, and better? So the idea is really to use the, the common data model as the center of where we, co where we kind of connect all these s solutions into one, into one um, uh, kind of data network, or what we, we actually started calling it the product graph, where we can actually follow from a product into all aspects of 
information around the product that starts with how it's designed and how it's defined and how, how it's specified into, okay, how has it been produced, how has, has it been sold, how has it been returned, and, and, um, and what's the state of it anyway. And aggregate these data into the common data model. The plan is that we will most probably release a service that is, sits on top of the common data so, uh, uh, service um, that is product, more product related and allows people to, do, to, to really access rich information around products, no matter where these information actually come from originally. And obviously also what Manos already said is that the part of the product that really defines the product should ideally be in its completeness and, and it's um, something that the common data model actually represents so that a simple application like Manos showed it earlier on would not need to actually implement a specific interface to sources, to PLM, to whatever, because we can trust that in the common data model we actually have the actual active version of that information already. So not every application somebody builds will actually start with, okay, I'm defining my product data in the application and I'm finding an interface to that. In the future, we will hope that the applications that do so will just take the common data model product, like they would take the common data model vendor, and say, here is it, it's already there. Don't need to do anything, it's there. Don't even need to care of that originally that is maintained in SAP, or that is maintained in Salesforce, or that is maintained in the PLM solution. Don't care. For me, that is my truth. And that is really what we believe is the value of the common data model in, this, in these scenarios. The other part is that connected product innovation brings new business models. And that's really what we see as a consequence of the digital transformation in manufacturing and in distribution. One thing we see, see coming up very, very strong is product as a service. Um, so people you might have seen or heard uh, last year on Hanover Industry Fair, we had a very, very big booth with Rolls-Royce, with the Rolls-Royce big engines. So what are they doing? How did they change their business model? They changed their business model by actually they're, they're not selling these engines to, to the air carriers, they're renting airtime. That changes the whole business model. It changes the way I'm looking at this product. But it also changes the business processes. We already had an ask from, uh, from a car manufacturer down the road here um, that actually I said, hey, um, I have my iDrive system, uh, how do, how, and I have my, my value-added services. How do I commercialize that? How do I, what's my commercial relation to, to actually, what system actually supports that? And to be honest, none of them does. Uh, n not well, at least. You can't do it somehow, but uh, it's, a new, it's a new way of looking at things, that products are delivered, but they stay in your ownership, and, uh, and they continue to stay in your ownership, and you change, and you, uh, you sell additional services. How is that working in a uh, traditional ERP? I think we have a lot of business process changes ahead of us. The other part is data will become a currency. Uh, we already see that that uh, the, the, the one you actually that you can actually start doing kind of consultancy around products around business processes uh, based on data that you actually have. <coughs> Predictive maintenance one has already pre uh, presented that, and then the other thing is that you, now you can actually offer customer values based on actually data driven knowledge, and this is really what we believe is a very very important thing, is that. Uh, you get, you can do measure actually measure things. Think of the diesel gate affair. Uh, imagine that you that you would sell a car with a guarantee of a certain consumption, not a promise, a guarantee with a measurement that you, that actually kind of requires you to fix if it's not meeting that measurement. That might be the future. So. 
that, that will also affect, affect processes. This is a little bit, this is the, in a nutshell, the mission statement of our organization, of the BAPI organization. Empower every user on the planet to achieve more. And obviously the business user is on top of that. And I want to really close my session with the kind of with the, with the call to action around that, because you can actually see that there is two components that are really fundamentally um, kind of targeted for partners, integrators, and ISVs. That is the system integration side, and that is the independent SaaS vendor side. The whole system really comes to life with your contribution. With when you start building applications that actually fit in, then we really kind of uh, uh, make that system work and and uh, and and get a better benefit for our customers and for the whole ecosystem together. So it's important to build connectors and gateways to any kind of subsystems that you have to populate. Uh, Connect to the common data uh, 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 services and to, to be to make to enable the, the system to really enable customers and other partners to to build end-to-end -end experiences based on that. Then build new D365 applications as soon as you can. We are the right now the dog fooding team that actually tries to do that for the first time and actually build services on top of the common data model and common data platform. And, uh, and so we'll, in a way, we will also make sure that when it hits you, that it will actually be really ready to be consumed. And then finally, build third-party applications that leverage the common data model for faster integration, faster implementation. You always have to, have to think of that. Uh, uh, if you have an application that builds on top of that model, there's no integration story anymore works out of the box.